Okay, just as the rest of the people join us, welcome back to our human performance webinars. My name is James Griggs and I'm joined today by some returning guests to the program. We have Dan Duffield over in the US. Dan, thanks for coming on. And Carolyn Sang in Australia, thanks for coming as well. Guys, really looking forward to this one. We're looking at best practices for visualizing your injury risk profiles inside of your athlete management system. As a, as a forewarning, this is just best practices for visualizing your injury risk profile. Of course, sport to sport, um, country to country, state to state, person to person, all of your ways in which you would want to be visualizing this information is obviously uh, very individualized and we would hate to jump up here and wave a flag on uh, what we think is concrete, the absolute best way to do it because we, uh, we know better. So today we're just looking at best ways, tips and tricks to visualize that, the, those pieces of information and ways that you can quickly have it inside of your AMS, maybe tweak it slightly. Uh, and I really look forward to this one today with Kaz and Dan. So just for those that are new to the, the live function here, please ask any and all questions. We're more than happy to field them during the webinar, post webinar. If you're on YouTube after, hello to you. Please leave a comment below, we'll jump to that. And without further ado, I'll hand it over to Dan Duffield to kick us off. Cool, thanks for that, James. And uh, welcome everybody. Um, it's good to be back on the webinar and, and be able to talk about this topic today. Um, so I, I think the, the where I want to start today and I think where we want to start as a group is just kind of defining what we want to talk about today. Um, so when we talk about injury risk profiling, we're not talking about injury risk prediction uh, as a lot of people define it uh, in the world of sport. So we're not looking here at getting a one number result out of the system that says your athlete is going to get injured today or not. What we're trying to uh, go through today is how to construct a injury risk profile that indicates athletes that may be at risk of injury based on a number of different data areas. So we're gonna look across uh, load monitoring, we're gonna look at across uh, physio screening, we're gonna look across wellness, um, as well as a number of other areas today. So I just really wanna put that forward uh, and as James said at the start of the podcast, um, we're not saying this is the way to do it. And we're certainly not advocating these variables as the variables for injury risk profiling. We want to deal with the philosophy of constructing an injury risk profile based on the environment that you're in and the technologies and resources you have access to. So where I'd like to start today is um, talking about selecting variables within uh, your organization. So again, as I said, you wanna start by looking at the technology and resources that you have available for you to monitor your athletes. So we have groups on this call from different levels. Some will have access to, to GPS monitors, um, high-end GPS monitors. Some will have access to um, obviously an application like Smarterbase to do wellness monitoring and collect RPEs. Um, some will have screening tools uh, like um, the, the Nord board suite of, you know, groin bar and four stacks and, and the like. So um, you've got to start with what you have access to, or if you're in a position where you can um, spend a little bit of money before you go and do that, try to think about what, what you want to do with those technologies, um, the data that you want to collect and what kind of decisions you want to make. So I think that the best place to start um, is using your expertise within your organization. So if you, if you have a good understanding of a lot of the research that's around um, injury risk, you'll understand that obviously high training loads is one that, that typically relates to injury. But within that, you've got so many different variables, especially with GPS monitors producing hundreds, if, if not thousands of different variables that you can now analyze. So it's important that you understand um, your own sport, the sport that you work in, and, and decide which of those variables that you're getting back from a GPS system um, might be useful for you. Again, if you're doing physiotherapy screening, like knee walls, adductor squeeze, sit and reach tests, that type of thing, it's understanding which of those tests are important in your uh, sport and which ones that you can actually run. And then as you, with your expertise, you should be able to come up with an idea of 
these variables, I believe, contribute to injury. And that's a starting point, um, especially if you don't have a huge amount of historical data to do any analysis on. If you're just starting out, um, just using, uh, doing a little bit of research, reading some articles, um, watching, watching some, um, some uh, lectures from, from conferences can also be a great place to start. Um, there's plenty of content out there for risk profiling. Probably the, I guess the gold standard and, and the way that people are starting to decide on variables now is actually using their historical data, which a lot of organizations are starting to collect, you know, three, four, five years of data on athletes and doing a little bit of, I guess, data mining. So taking that data, running it through statistical packages to look for correlations between um, variables and injury. Um, and, and that can be, again, another really good um, assistance when you're coming up with your injury risk variables. So then, then what you've got to do once you've selected those variables is come up with what your flagging system is going to be. So I guess firstly, what you're going to have is an absolute flag. And what I mean by that is flags that are based off the raw value. So it might be if it's off load or RPE, you might say, I want to flag uh, an RPE of an eight or above. If you're doing a, if you're doing total distance, you might in your sport, you know, um, five kilometers or five miles might be um, a flag for you. Uh, in wellness, it might be above a, uh, an eight out of 10 for muscle soreness as an example. So you can use that as a flag, but one of the things that you'll find is that every individual is different. So in order to take into account that um, individual variability, we talk about things like um, Z scores, which we're going to we're going to show you a little bit of today. But essentially, what we're looking at with Z scores is the variation from the athlete's normal. So we're taking their mean and looking at how many standard deviations they are away from their normal, and then creating a flag based off that. Um, one of the other ones that's probably not as popular and and Again, understanding the different groups of people we have on here. Um, one that's not used as well is the consecutive drop flag. So what I mean by that is um, flagging a variable that declines over a few days. So for example, muscle soreness. And if I can, if I can give you a practical example, say an athlete regularly reports a, a five out of 10 and one day they report a six, the next day they report a five, and the next day they report a four. You may not, the, the absolute flag wouldn't, wouldn't get um, picked up there. Um, their Z score, that might not be, none of those values might be outside of their normal range. And so you still wanna understand that they're trending downward. So using something like a consecutive drop flag can actually tell you that over the last uh, three days, They've declined every single day. But I, I think where, where we see most of our more experienced, um, I guess, users of the SmarterBase platform, um, where they're starting to go now is doing multi-level flagging. So it's actually combining two or even three of those um, different flag types with each of their variables to get a really comprehensive understanding of um, whether an athlete is flagging. So, I guess that's, that's kind of the, the, the basis of your injury risk profiling. You've got to come up with your variables and then you've got to understand what type of flagging you want to do. Once you've got that, you can then start to construct the system around the data collection um, and, and the main part of what we're going to talk about today, which is the reporting and the feedback from those flags. So I think at this point, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hand over to, to Carolyn. She's going to take us through uh, the dashboard and then take us to um, the, the builder side of SmarterBase to show us how we can build some of these flags in, in the system. Awesome, thanks Dan. So as um, Dan and James just said, we're going to show you an example of what we believe is best practice for our injury risk profile. And this is based off our experience with our clients and what they like to implement as well. So to start us off, we've got one of our dashboard builders um, or dashboard built dashboards. So we've got a table at the start here and we're just using this to summarize our flags for the day. So a lot of our clients also like to um, pop a couple of filters up the top here. So we've got an athlete filter. So if you want to dig in and you want to 
filter for a particular athlete, you can do so here. So we can click into here. We have the ability to also select multiple athletes if we like as well. And then we've also got a date filter. So if you wanted to pop back historically, you can also do that. Um, so most importantly, we've also got a couple of filters to help us reduce the amount of data that we're looking at. So at first glance, if we're looking at our injury risk profile and we want to focus on, for example, our modified athletes, we can use this status filter. Or if we would like to, we can even use this number of risk flags filter as well. So if we wanted to focus on some of our athletes that have more than one flag or a particular number of flags, we can also filter out and narrow our focus onto the athletes that might need a bit more attention. So when first looking at this table, we've picked a couple of variables. And as Dan said, um, this variable selection is up to you, but we just wanted to show you a little bit of an example of some variables that we pulled in from a couple of different areas or data sets. So you can see on the left hand side here, we've got our entire squad and then we have our availability. So this is our availability, is something that we pulled in for our injury record. And this may be something that your physiotherapist in your organization may update. We've also got some ACWR metrics, which we're pulling on from a GPS provider. So this is something that our clients may use um, through an integration. And then we've also got a player load ACWR. So this is something that often our clients will have their athletes use our athlete app to fill out their RP or training load. We've also got some Z scores, which Dan mentioned before. So we've got some MSK screening tests. So we've got our ductor squeeze and our sit and reach. And then we've also got some wellness questions. So our muscle soreness and sleep hours. So you'll notice first in this dashboard here, we've got a bit of conditional formatting. So something that we can do here and our clients use a lot is apply conditional formatting to each column. So we've got different data sets applied to some of these um, metrics here. So you can see that some of them are numerical and we've also got some text values as well. So for our ACWR, we can apply a basic conditional formatting based off um, a range of 80 to 130, which is what I've applied here. So if we go outside of those bounds, I can color up my cells red or for example, yellow, if I have a particular range that I'm interested in. We've also got some Z scores here, which I've colored up using that conditional formatting again. So I've set these to color up if they're less than or equal to negative 1.5 or green if they're greater than 1.5. And this is something that you can also change on the fly if you think that that's too sensitive for you. Some of our clients also like to use text values to interpret their flags. So if you prefer to use a text value rather than a numerical value, if you find that might be easier for your organization, a lot of our clients like to write some calculations that can give us an idea of trend, or it might, might even be as simple as a yes, no, if there is a flag or not. For our sleep hours, we've just applied a basic um, conditional formatting if there is less than eight hours of sleep as well. So here you can see we can apply additional, um, different conditional formatting on these columns based on each column on an individual basis. So this will give us our flags. So what we've done here, or what we wanted to show here for this workflow is logging in for the first time, you can see we have a couple of different flags. So what, about, what our clients like to do is log in, they might reduce our table to the flags that they wanna focus on. So we might go greater than two flags. And then we can pop down the bottom here and use this as our indicator of who we might want to pay a little bit more attention to. So down the bottom here, we have a little bit of a breakdown. So we just wanted to show here some examples of what our clients like to use in terms of visualizations. So we have Oliver Taylor here. If you looked in that table above, we have Oliver Taylor as someone that we might want to pay a little bit more attention to as he has a couple of flags. So here we have a couple of examples. So we've got of just showing you how you can overlay different data sets together. So up the top here, we've just got a bar graph that is showing you some raw data. So we've got our raw data from our GPS form, so our total distance. And then we've also got some sit and reach flags. However, at the moment, Oliver doesn't have any of those flags. If we pop down the bottom here, we've also got another example of our player load. So that's coming from our RPE form and that may be entered by mobile entry for a lot of our clients. So this is just our ACWR. 
And then we've also got a bar graph in the red that's summarizing the total number of risk flags that that player had each of those days. Another nice graph that some of our clients like to use is just a radar plot. So if you wanted to summarize some Z scores for some key areas, we've got a, couple, a little example for you here. So you can see down the bottom here, we've got some of our wellness metrics. So that's our muscle soreness, our sleep and our stress Z scores. And then we've got some MSK metrics as well that you can plot in the same graph. So our duct to squeeze and our sit and reach Z score. Another graph that we've seen some of our clients implement as well in our, their injury risk profiles is just utilizing our scatter plot. So we've got a really cool graph here. We've got our sprint ACWR on this, on this axis. And then we've also got our adductor squeeze on this axis here. So what we can do here is we can actually color up or conditionally format our scatter plot based on our general muscle soreness flag as well. So as you saw above here, we had um, a couple of different statuses for our muscle soreness, our declined, stable and improved. And if we go down the bottom, we can conditionally format these dots as well to represent that trend. So another thing that our clients have found really beneficial and something that I experienced as well as a former client is having the ability to make these changes on the fly. So one other thing our clients might want to do is change our dashboard on the fly as well. So if I want to add another, um, another column into this dashboard, for example, I can pop into our amazing dashboard builder. So if I just click on this widget here, I can simply add a new column and publish. So I'm going to show you that right now. So as Kaz is going through and making some changes on this dashboard builder, I think you know the key messages here, obviously along with Dan's beautiful uh, explanation of getting our variables is regardless of what system you're in, uh, whether it be Excel or any, any softwares out there on the market or something that you create yourself, we've found from, from our experience that our clients have been most happy when they have the ability to make these changes themselves or when they know that these changes are um, available to make themselves. You know, a classic example of that right now is Kaz hit save and publish on that table dashboard. You know, looking at the, the changes in the, the way in which we're calculating load, you know, hotly contested debate, acute chronic workload ratio, exponential weighted, what else, you know, STEN scores, where it's not so much having a system that can configure everything, it's having a system that can configure when you want it to configure and, and, and roll with you as you evolve. You know, thinking, um, you know, when you're looking at getting a system in place, yes, how's it gonna suit me in year one, but what about years three, four, five? What happens when those variables change and how can we have a system that evolves with us. So these are examples um, and, and those are examples of, of a system that can and, and we, we have seen clients really benefit from having a system like that. Kaz, you popped in another column there. What have we got? Awesome. So I just popped in a column just to show the actual number of risk flags that we have calculating here. And as you saw, it was simple as adding that extra column and hitting publish and it's right there for us. So I guess like the last point that I can touch on here, just to show you how easy it is to adapt or change this dashboard is the conditional formatting. Um, so you can see here, the zero flags here aren't colored up. So if I wanted to color these up green, for example, I can pop into my dashboard builder. You'll notice we have some tabs up the top here. So I can just pop into rule sets. We've got a couple of different rule sets here, but I wanna focus on the flags one here. So all I have to do is type in that text value. So zero flags and hit publish, and then we'll see if we've got a change on our front end. Fingers crossed. Live demonstrations are always very risky, so we'll see how we go. You know, another thing to note here is the, the flow of events. Dr. Marcus Colby talked about this a few weeks ago on, on our webinars, and, and that was the flow of visualization. So you would have noticed, and you will notice when we jump back on here, the we've got that stacked table graph right looking at the the total group and then we flow down into the individual as as kaz has hit save there has, has your example worked there kaz we've got the green yeah so we've got the green for our zero flags yeah yeah beautiful yeah so the the flow of events so we're looking at the group initially you might get an alert from your phone you might get a, a 
a push notification as one of the questions came in. You might get one of those to indicate that a flag has happened. And then it's a case of, okay, we better get into the system. We take a look at the system. We look at our individual. We also take a look at our group at the top of the page and then we understand, okay, who do we, who do we need to do a deep dive on? And to Dan's point, you know, you might have within your deep dive two or, or three key metrics that you're looking to lay over each other to do a little bit more uh, analysis on. And, and this down here is just an example of, of what we've seen some of our, our clients do. Kaz, did you have anything more that you wanted to touch on there? No, that's all good. Yeah, great. So look, in terms of uh, wrapping, wrapping this up, one of the things that Dan did mention at the top of the call was looking at some um, programming languages to, to look at further analysis on your data. So that the clients that Dan was referring to that are data mining. And uh, that, that of course comes with experience and that of course comes with skills from the people on, on, on your side of, of uh, the organization. But it also comes with a lot of data and some, some consistent data entry um, that has happened over a meaningful period of time. However, I did just want to share my screen and just show you through a brief example um, of the West Coast Eagles and what they had done. This was presented at our summit last year. Just let me know if you guys can see that. So the the Eagles, um, they've been with us for a very long time. And this is just an example. Again, they have a good lot of consistent data in their system. They have been able to uh, link in with, a, with, they use R for their um, mathematical or their, their programming language of choice. And they will push out using this R script, uh, sorry, pull out using this R script and then run, run their equations. They've got about 15, 17 different Smarter base forms that they're pulling out and running an equation on, and then it's just as simple as pushing it back into the system. So again, just an example of, of having a system, if you are going down that route of using uh, a programming language like R that you do then want to push back into your visualization suite um, to create those flags. Having, having a system that can be able to do that and do that uh, relatively quickly, just as I I speak here we'll we'll throw the example up and hopefully it'll it'll run in time um having an exam having a system that can push pull into these languages and and have that reflect those changes reflect very very quickly um is something that our clients have really seen tremendous value in dan did you have anything that you wanted to add here on the on the r front yeah uh, i mean i think you pretty much uh, touched on a lot of the key points i think the the value of pushing it out to R is just the uh, the expand or any other technology is just the expanded um, inbuilt functions they have available for this type of mining. Um, and, you know, a lot of a lot of good stuff we can do in SmarterBase, but um, again, our clients are are really exploring the the extent of their um, statistical knowledge and and what they can do with these types of platforms. So. We're more, we love supporting that um, and we certainly encourage people as you get more and more data, um, it, it's a great opportunity for you to start doing things like this. But it also highlights the importance of good quality data as well. Yeah. Um, you want to be making sure that you're getting consistent data coming into your platform, um, especially the self-reported stuff, um, data coming from integrations. If that's consistent, you're going to get a much better end result uh, as you start to do this data mining. So on that note, what we'll do is we will pop, pop the dashboard back up and we'll take any and all questions that you do have. There was one that came in throughout the presentation just for everyone to hear. It was, um, I'll read it word for word so everyone can, can hear it exactly. It was, can you set up alerts for those flags so that the system just tells you who to look slash when. So I think, I think that's referring to, and, and I responded via chat and those that, that can see, can see, um, referring to notifications. So not actually being in the system uh, and having those flags have happened. And then the appropriate people in your organization being notified of those, those flags happening via text, email, push notification. Um, so then you know to get into the system. So you're not constantly just sitting at the system all day waiting for the, the information to, to update. As we're beginning to wrap up, um, feel free to either raise your hand, write any sort of questions that you do have in the chat functionality. We, again, we're looking to do these twice a month. So 
Um, if you if you are a SmarterBase client and any of this information was of value to you and you want to speak to, to us further, um, please reach out to your SmarterBase consultant. If you do not have their contact details, you can get me. It's just james at fusionsport.com. If you're not a SmarterBase client and you, you like what you saw or you just want to have a bit more of a chat about best practices for athlete management systems, then you can get me, james at fusionsport.com. Uh, and with that, I don't see any any questions coming through. Um, yeah, actually, just saw one here. Then, sorry, Tess, no. <laughs> just one of our staff here. Uh, then, thank you very much for joining, everyone. Really appreciate the time. Uh, have a great day and have a great weekend.